Now you can hear me. Hi. Hi, folks. Fanny Rainer's here. So it is Wednesday again. Like I said, plenty of technical difficulties. Sorry I was late. Um, I always say rather late than never. Are we having a good time? Hope so. Just want to adjust the volume here a bit because I can hear myself too loud. Let's see, that's much better. Okay, let's see. That it's much better like that. Okay, cool. All right, so um, let me just... Uh So there's my screen again. Whoopa, GRPC. And um, yeah, so GRPC is a thing. I think it started. Uh, it was started by Google. In high performance open source universal request procedure. 
or remote procedure call framework, RPC. Um, <clears throat> they say simpler, simple service definition. Define your service using protocol buffers. That's protobufs. That is a, uh, as I can get it, that's a, um, also a thing that started by Google. Now, if we see what is protocol buffers, and that's basically a service definition, and you have your service defined as, let me just maybe zoom in a bit. You have your service defined as a service directive with your name. So it looks like it in a like normal JSON syntax, I think. And then there's a RPC, the name of the function, uh, the type of um, it requests, and the type it returns. It's easy enough. And then you have a message. That's a type, so I suppose these two line up. And these are protocol buffers, I would say. So the notion of services and messages, that's what we need to remember here. So they say protocol buffers. Yeah, exactly. So uh, this is an example of a protocol buffer. Hey, Hannah. Hannah. Good evening. How are you doing? Thank you for joining the stream. Is it Hanak or Hannah? We'll see. Uh, so this is protocol buffers. Very interesting thing. It makes me think of uh, of JSON, but it's really not JSON. It's like a binary format, I would say. And from the looks of things, you can use your own language like Python, C++, C Sharp, F Sharp, most probably. Um, let's see. Okay, so that's in a nutshell. That's uh, RPC. So. I think what we need to focus on is to understand the, the notion of um, the service and then describe your service requests and responses like this. So they say, gRPC lets you define four kinds of service methods. Um, Unary RPC where the client sends a single request to the server and gets a single response back, so like one one like a normal function call. Um, hey, look at this. Uh, also, the server streaming RPC calls, where the client sends a request to the server and gets a stream to read a sequence of messages back. That is quite interesting, I would say. Hopefully, I'm not too loud now, so um, you guys can give me feedback in the, in the, in the in the chat below. This is, I'm still a newbie in this streaming thing. Still learning a lot e uh, every day. Um, okay, so there's an example of uh, RPC lots of replies with one request that returns a response. I don't see any difference between this one and this one instead of the name. Uh, if there are any RPC experts Please uh, put your uh, chat in the chat box so that we can get connected. All right, so another one is uh, the notion of the client streaming RPCs where the client writes a sequence of messages and send them to the server. Again, asking for provider stream. So once a client has finished writing the messages, it waits for the server to read and return its responses. And this is interesting. Again, the RPC guarantees message ordering with individual RPC calls. So this is, I would say, this is mainly almost possibly like a um, like a message bus or something like a queue. Um, from the looks of it. Mm, let's see.
Okay. What else we have? Um, using the API service on the server side, the server implements the methods declared by the server and returns the gRPC server for the client to handle. And on the client side, the client has a local object known as a stub that you need to sort of implement, I would say. Going a bit further, synchronous RPC calls block until the response received from the server are closest approximation to the abstraction of the procedure. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, not really interesting right now. Okay, so basically that is it. So we have request response. This is what uh, RPC is. So you have your server and you have your client and uh, it could be separate clients you know, like a Ruby client and a, and a Java client uh, so it does a protocol request and a prior response this also does a prior request prior response which is quite cool um, so let's see bi-directional streaming which is very cool Okay, so it's got the support for all these languages like C++, Java, C Sharp, Python, Go, Ruby, uh, Dart, Web. Okay, Web is what is like HTML, um, JavaScript or something. What is this? Interesting. Okay, so getting started. So I've got this... Um, I've got this little uh, repo open here that I found. It's a uh, grpc.net repository that I found. Um, so I thought, well, maybe it, it could be a good idea to sort of <coughs> get familiarized with this uh, library. So it's a preview of grpc for ASP.NET Core. And it would be shipped uh, as part of .NET Core 3.0, I would say. The official version of GRPC C Sharp ready for production or workloads, which is quite cool. So the plan, we plan to implement a fully managed version of GRPC 4.net that we will build on top of ASP.NET Core HTTP2 server. It's fully interoperable. Good integration with the rest of the ASP.NET Core ecosystem, which is very important. We plan to provide a managed .NET Core client as well. Cool. I don't think I have .NET Core 3 installed. So let's re quickly see if we have something like that installed here. So you go .NET version, I would say, 2.1. Okay, so I would need .NET Core 3. Cool. And uh, da, 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 da. Okay, I would need to use Visual Studio 2019 that I won't jump in right now because I don't think I have that at the moment. See, that's quite interesting. Um, I just see something now that my my chat here is not. Updating for some reason. So if we go test. Oops, not there. If we go test there. Will it come up to the screen? I'm not sure. Don't want to miss any chat messages. Yeah, there we go. So Twitch looks like it's disconnected for some reason. So 
let's see, edit settings. Looks fine. Well, for some reason, that, okay, so for some reason the chat's not displaying from Twitch on the screen. So, uh, but I, I can see it on my monitor in front of me. So if you do happen to be on Twitch um, and asking a question, just just know I would probably see it come along. Check. Awesome. Uh, now it works for some reason. I didn't do anything. I just like left it open. <laughs> Any case, back to work. So let's see. We need the 64-bit installer of .NET Core 3. 104 megabytes. Can you believe that? Okay, so it's installing, and while it's installing, I'm just checking the quality of the stream here, yeah, because um, sometimes it's not really what I want. Uh, no, I don't have Visual Studio 2019 installed yet. Um, I don't think I would need it for this demo. No, maybe it's a good idea to install it, just for in case. So this um, <coughs> this demo might be a how to install the tools for gRPC. We never know when it will end, because my luck has it again that things will break, like normally will break. So let's see. Is my stream okay? Because I've got difficulty on my monitor and stuff like that is not showing up all the time it's like it feels like it's sort of not always there can someone just confirm on the on the chat let's see Hank, if you can hear me, can you just maybe see if my stream is working out fine? Because uh, it doesn't, it, it looks like it's moving, but I don't know if it's really moving. Or it's just me. Uh, blah, blah, let's see. Do I need, let's just install community for now. Probably should be fine. Pretty latency of 10 to 15 seconds. Yeah, th th there probably would be a latency. But uh, is it sort of, is the quality okay? That's more my question. So that's fine. I don't think I would need Visual Studio for this. Cool. Just give me a shout if the quality drops. You can be my lookout for today. <laughs> hey. Hello, friends. Thank you for joining. There's the whole VoIP team here again. Alright, so this is .NET Core 3 and every time I, I touch preview things, it feels like it's breaking. So let's just hope this works. So for those that are just joining, we're learning all about gRPC, which is a Google's implementation or Google's thing of uh, remote procedure calls, their thing. 
Okay. Right, so let's see. Where are we? Okay, this is Visual Studio, so we won't need that. Um, is this installed though? Well, that's installed. Cool. So we would have 3.0 installed. That's great. Let's get started. Let's get started. Um, <clears throat> let's go to a sandbox environment and uh, let's give it a try. GRPC. And then we see if we can follow along. I've also seen this great blog post. Um, this was uh, done by Steve Gordon um, last month about uh, gRPC. It's an early look at gRPC and ASP.NET Core 3. This information in this post is therefore based on early code and has potential change during the main previews after release. So we'll look at the updated things, but let's just see what they say here. So, okay, so you can have a actual syntax for this little thing. So you have a proto version, so you have a syntax, you specify the syntax, <coughs> package, whatever that means. GRPC uses a .proto file to define the shape of your service contract. It contains a schema, so it could be seen as the swagger for your service, I would say. <coughs> Okay, so this is cool. You have your service and then you have your message. Great, great. What do we need? We need Google Protobuf. Um, that's quite cool. It's pretty cool hosting model in process. Okay. Let me see. What does that mean? Does it mean I can include all the protobuf things? Generate from protobuf. It's a thing. It's a protobuf. It's a thing. I never really got why you would use RPC. Well, it's uh, this is a part of the exploration here, right? So, what is all the fuss about? Because people are talking about the gRPC um, at the summit of also uh, attending a bit of sessions about gRPC, and um, yeah, it's probably probably a valid question. Uh, I think it has to do with. Uh, it's not rest, but it's like the cooler rest, I would say. And then we just go ask Google. So gRPC uses HTTP2 to support highly performant and scalable APIs. So there is your answer. So I think it goes beyond rest. This might be a good example. Why milliseconds matter? You never. Blah, blah, blah. Multiple clients, parallel calls, test calls, normal load, heavy load. All right, so there's an example. Multiple clients, normal load. So this is a rest in red. So it's the time in seconds. And gRPC is the time in... So it, it looks a bit what as you can see rest is faster in this test gRPC has more overhead because it affects the duration of the call okay so that's a bit concerning we don't want any things that's not performant right so this okay there it gets interesting so on heavy load scenarios it makes more sense Internally, REST might handle this better than GPRS. See? How is this internally might be a research on its own? Blah, blah, blah. So let's see how that, what this means. 
Interesting, so you have your REST request, server processing REST response, you have your GPR request, server response, response. So in this case, iterations go up, it sort of stabilizes, but for heavy load it looks like a better option than REST, right? So we'll dig into this deeper. So how do you define normal load and heavy loads? Uh, parallel calls also better. Ooh, look at this. Heavy load parallel calls. <coughs> Way better. As for the test rolls, GRPC is faster than rest in most tests. Most tests. Hold on. Mm -hmm. 